Hi, everybody. This is Steve Grizzetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com Guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. And here we are in Photoshop Elements in Part 8 of our 8-part basic training for Adobe Photoshop Elements. Here in Part 8, we want to talk about outputting our photos, outputting our final photo projects. And there are almost as many ways to output a photo as there are formats for outputting a photo. If you've got a finished photo, the easiest way to output the photo in different formats is to go to the file menu at the top left of the screen and select save as. And here on this panel that opens, if you go to save as file type, you have a number of options for outputting your photo in different file formats. Which file format you choose is probably determined by how you're going to use it. Are you going to use it online? Are you going to use it in a print project? Are you going to use it in social media? Are you going to use it in a video? From this screen, you can output a Photoshop file, a bitmap, a GIF, a JPEG, all the way down to pings and tiffs. And each one of these different formats has different advantages to it. Let's cancel out of this screen. It's also not the only way you can output a photo file from Photoshop Elements. If you go up to the File menu, you also have the option to Save for Web. If I select that option, a workspace opens up for optimizing your photo files, particularly if you're going to save them for the web or for social media. In the upper right hand corner, you can determine which format you're going to output it as, a GIF, a JPEG, a PING24. Each one of these file formats has certain advantages to it. For instance, GIFs and PINGs have the advantage of including transparency and alpha channel. Using transparency, you can output a photo or a graphic that is non-square, that is not square or rectangular. I show you how to do that and why you do that in my book. But the more common way to output a photo for the web is to save it as a JPEG. And here in this workspace, you have certain tools here for optimizing your output. Does file size matter? Well, my original file, as you can see in the thumbnail on the left, is about 8 megabytes. My optimized file is 99 kilobytes. Well, that's with quality set to low. I could set the quality all the way up to maximum. But do I need to? This screen helps you determine that. It shows you a thumbnail of what you originally started with and what you're going to output. And in this particular case with this photo, a low quality output would give me a photo that looks almost as good as the original at a fraction of the size. So it's a very powerful workspace. And it's got tools on here for optimizing both the size of the picture itself and the size of the file you're going to output from it. But let's cancel out of that. If you look under the Enhance menu, down at the bottom, you'll see a couple of options for outputting what are essentially three-dimensional-like photos. Let's select Moving Photos. This cool tool will create 3D-like motion from your photo. So you can see over on the right, we've got options for creating zoom in and out, for creating pan left and pan right. If I were to select, for instance, pan right, I'll just double click on it, the program is going to actually divide my photo into a foreground, middle ground, and background, and it's going to create what looks like three-dimensional motion in the photo. See that? The man looks like he's moving in three-dimensional space. Let's play that again. If I select Export, you'll notice that my options here are now in MP4, which is a video format and GIF, an animated GIF. Both of these are ideal formats for outputting a motion graphic or a, a video file to social media. Let's cancel out of that. And we'll cancel out of this workspace and go back to our original photo. In the upper right hand corner of the program under Share, you'll find tools for exporting your photo directly to Flickr or Facebook. This will actually open up a link between you and the social media site and output an optimized version of your photo up directly to those social media sites. Also on the left hand side, upper left of the program, you'll find under the create button tools here for creating a number of different photo projects. If we have several photos open, we could create a slideshow or a photo collage or a photo reel. We can create a quote graphic, which is sort of like a meme. We can create a greeting card, a photo calendar, 
And there's even this here, prints and GIFs. This will link you directly to the Fujifilm site where your optimized photo will be sent up and you can choose to have it printed on a coffee cup or a hat or a t-shirt or framed. And this is a tool for uploading your photo directly to that site. So as you can see, there are a number of ways to output your finished photo in Photoshop Elements. If you want to know more about all the great tools that are available in this program, I hope you'll check out the many tips and tutorials we have at moviepix.com. If you want to know everything there is to know about Photoshop Elements, pick up a copy of the moviepix.com guide to Adobe Photoshop Elements. It's available at amazon.com. And if you've got any questions, I hope you'll drop by our website, moviepix.com, M-U-V-I-P-I-X.com. Drop by it for nothing else and just say hello and join our little community. I hope you've enjoyed getting to know this program, and I hope you'll continue to explore what is, I think, a really feature-packed tool for editing and creating great photo projects. I'm Steve Grizzetti. I wrote the book, and I hope to see you again real soon. Take care.